Um, all right, so the uh, next topic that we have on the agenda is uh, basically an update on what we're doing in the Record Power project right now. So I'm just going to go and give a real quick brief overview of all of the very recent things that we've just completed, as well as all of the kind of open contributions that we're working on right now, just so that you guys kind of get a feel for, for what's going on right now. Um, so first of all, this is kind of the scope of Rack and Power. So it, it has um, specifications out there that define both mechanical as well as the electrical requirements for both 12 volts um, as well as for 48-volt uh, uh, infrastructures. Um, there's, there's not a lot of detail that really defines the, you know, the height of the rack, the depth of the rack, um, the power shelves. Um, there's no restrictions on how you know, big the power shelves are. There's no restrictions on the type of technologies that are used in the power shelves. It defines those interfaces, though, right? However you're generating a 12-volt that's going onto the bus bar, all right, what are the conditions for that power once it gets to the bus bar? Uh, that gives the community a lot of opportunity to go innovate around what that power shelf is um, while, uh, while still making sure that all of the IT gear that plugs into that bus bar is compatible. Um, so that gives quite a bit of flexibility, um, but it also means that there's a lot of choice um, so one of the things that we're going to be doing later today is kind of looking at maybe identifying some of the SKU levels um, around uh, the, both rack and power systems so we can limit the number of potential op options that are available out there. Um, so there's, there's a lot more detail associated with this. If you go and, as Archon had mentioned, there's a, a detailed document out on the OCP wiki that defines exactly what's included in the scope and what's not included within the scope of the rack and power project. Um, so if you see, if, you, if there's something that uh, you think should be in there, that's, you know, we can certainly talk about that. Um, there may be other things or technologies that you feel um, uh, should be part of OCP that don't have a home here. That doesn't mean that there aren't other places within open compute um, where there is a home for that. And that's where, uh, you know, Bill and Archana can kind of help find the right people to get that technology included in, in, uh, in what we're doing. Um, so uh, this uh, particular contribution, so this is Nokia's uh, Telco Zone 4 <laughs> submission. Uh, this was just recently approved um, where they're taking uh, an open rack and it, they contributed the, the structural pieces that you see here that allows a single rack to comply with uh, the uh, uh, JR63. Uh, zone 4. So there was actually, I believe they had this at the summit uh, this year, and I believe they had the, an early prototype of it um, a year earlier. Um, so this was also recently approved. So this is a specification that uh, Rital submitted um, that allows rack uh, suppliers kind of easily purchase and install uh, bus bars as a kit and install them on the rack. So now you've got essentially interchangeability between uh, open rack and the bus bars that go in the rack. So a uh, rack supplier can then go out to the community now and pull uh, bus bars from bus bar experts, right, and assemble them onto their rack without having to go on and develop a different bus bar system for different power le levels for all of their customers, um, which as of right now might be a requirement. Um, similarly, the uh, people that are experts in uh, developing bus bars, this gives them access to all the members of the community that are building racks as long as they choose to comply with this particular uh, specification. Um, so this also kind of uh, will be uh, included in our discussion when we talk about power skews later on this, uh, this morning because um, we want to kind of set those skews up so that bus bar suppliers can then go and focus on bus bar SKUs that make sense for open rack rather than having to decide for themselves what the right power levels are. We're hoping that we can have a discussion to set up those uh, power levels uh, and help focus some of those choices. So Steve, question, yeah, does that sure. become a, a requirement that you 
requirement or optional? So, so that's a good question. So as of right now, this is set up as a separate specification, right? So you can still comply with open rack without complying with this. Um, so that's uh, a great discussion to have, right? Is whether over time we want to go in and make that a requirement. Like if you want to, if you want to ship open rack, it has to have this particular interface in it or not. Um, that's, a, that's a great um, discussion point. But right now we didn't want to force it in there because then anything that we were shipping right now, everybody would, um, um, it wouldn't be part of 2.0. So we are doing an update to the open rack um, to 2.1. Uh, we're going to show kind of the first changes for those at the European Summit in October. Um, so that would be a good time to decide whether this should be in scope or outside of scope for that, that 2.1 is uh, in October. Yep, yeah, go ahead. What are you doing for the 48 volt? Um, for the 48 volt, so this particular specification covers both the 12 volt and the 48 volt bus bars. So I think the picture that's up there is a 12 volt, but the volumetric uh, for the bus bar is the same. The outer shell interface is the same whether it's 12 volt or 48 volt. So it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Um, this is, this uh, would, would uh, allow both to comply. So Steve, I think the, the naming convention um, is part of the specification. Yes, is that right? yes, that's true. So Did I? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I sure did. <laughs> Sorry about that. I'll, I will update that. Uh, yeah, exactly. We like Facebook. We like Caleb, you want to make a note of that? Well, that'll, that'll be an action item for me to go change that. It was really easy work. Would it, would it be lighter? Yeah, absolutely. There'd be definitely less copper for your 48. By the way, I mean, I think this is some of the motivation behind it, because uh -huh. if you're going into a colo facility that has a, you know, six kilowatt, you know, cooling capacity, you can probably get away with a lot less copper in the bus bar. So the whole idea is that, you know, based on where that rack ends up, let's, let's match up the bus bar to, you know, the last possible instance, or be able to make a final decision, even within a, Facility, does it go into a, you know, a, four, a four kilowatt white space or a 25 kilowatt white space? And you can actually make that decision and install the proper bus bar. So. I think the, uh, to answer that, the, the interface point doesn't change. So the overriding right. specification um, of the OCP mm -hmm. reference power spec, the interface point with the clipping gauge it stays the same. And then you, then you can choose. So the, so the, the connection points at the end of the rack remain the same always as per the spec. The interface points with a clip remain the same, and then you can innovate around that space on how you join everything together. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, this one, this one's real. This one's legit. That's from Facebook. <laughs> um, so this is a, a specification that Facebook is working on right now. It defines the. Uh, basically indicators, the icons, the behavior of the LEDs. Um, so we'll have consistency across products that we have in development. So as of right now, this is going to be an optional specification that um, um, people that are developing, say uh, you're doing a specification for a storage product, you could either choose to include this as a requirement or, or not. That would be up to the people that are contributing that product. Um, at some point, if uh, the IC chooses, they could make this a mandatory thing. But right now, it's just an optional thing. Um, and uh, um, um, so it's because this particular uh, specification impacts 
um, all of the products potentially across the open compute. Um, th we're actually going to uh, quite a few different groups. Uh, so Michael Hakens, the engineer that's working on this, um, is presented in the storage. Uh, he's uh, presented in both rack and power and uh, server and networking and then networking. So he, he's actually gone through all the different groups because this uh, impacts um, lots of different products that, that are developing. So he's received all of, lots of feedback from everybody. He's incorporated that. Um, the next time this will come up is in uh, our next meeting in August, our monthly Rack and Power meeting in August. He's going to present again um, with all of the latest uh, and final uh, changes to make sure that he's got everything uh, up to uh, everybody's expectations. And if that goes well, then he will present that to the incub incubation committee uh, later on in August. Um, so like everything else, the specification for this is out on the wiki for everybody to uh, review and, and enjoy. Uh, okay, so this is uh, a power shelf that uh, ABB, or previously uh, GE, is uh, in the process of contributing. Um, the specifications for this are out on the wiki as well. Um, um, we'll see some more detail on this uh, later on this afternoon. So I won't spend a, a whole lot of time on this yet, but uh, that power shelf is currently um, under submission. And, and so this one is um, um, also in development. This is an interoperability spec that uh, Archon had mentioned earlier. Um, the purpose of this is to allow suppliers from different companies that are developing power shelves with equivalent uh, power ratings and specifications to be interoperable. Um, so, as we go forward, the base specification doesn't define a lot of the details around how these power shelves are constructed. Um, but we are planning to add addendums essentially to the specification that will be very specific for particular power shelf solutions. For example, we might have a 15 kilowatt solution that works on a single bus bar that has um, a, a, you know, 230 three phase input and a 12 volt output with uh, six rectifiers. Uh, so that level of detail would then go into that very specific specification allowing lots of companies to go out and develop essentially interoperable product around that. Um, so this also kind of feeds into the power skew discussion that we're gonna have here in a little bit. Right, because we want, we want power shells that are um, mating up with bus bars that are all essentially at the same, designed around those same power levels for the rack. Um, so we also have uh, the uh, Redfish protocol that is uh, currently in development. We've all got a little sub uh, group that's working on that. Um, and we've got uh, Richard, where are you? Ah, there you are. So Richard's going to come up and give us a little bit more uh, detail of what's going on with this. Oh, those are a couple of slides I inserted. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, That's good fine. luck talking to those then. <laughs> well, let, me, let me try yeah, to set this up. Put the context for you, Richard. Yep. So um, our hardware management group uh, adopted a strategy to align hardware management with the uh, uh, DTMF organization's uh, Redfish specification. And, um, and so, you know, the, the, the strategy is that we should adopt Redfish as the protocol for uh, out-of-band hardware management. Um, and that's a pretty comprehensive specification with lots of different, uh, re you know, required uh, properties and, and uh, optional properties. And to drive consistency across all of our products, um, they've broken that into uh, a subset of those properties um, and define that uh, in what we call as the OCP profile. And there's actually going to be several of those I'll speak to. Um, and the idea is that uh, we're not going to change the properties at all or the uh, JSON. Um, it'll be completely compatible. And because of that, we'll be able to use the Redfish uh, validation test, the interoperability test, and that'll, you know, as that product or uh, capability gets rolled into our products, that we'll have um, compatibility with that. 
So um, let's see, next slide. Um, so here's just a snapshot on uh, a slide that was developed by the hardware management group. Um, they are defining a baseline set of, of properties, redfish properties, that, that any and all um, OCP products should comply to. Uh, and then on top of that, there's uh, a set of properties that are, uh, that are uh, applicable to a, a particular device. And so there's four devices that they've identified, um, uh, servers, network, storage, um, and, and power, uh, and the rack and power that, that uh, Richard's gonna talk about in a minute. Um, and so actually two of those uh, specifications were released in April, um, and so today you can uh, download the specification that describes the required properties for the baseline config in which all equipment should, should uh, support, and then the server profile, and again, which uh, all server products should support. There's work going on on network storage and the power profile. Uh, recently, our telecom group said, hey, this is a really great idea for out-of-bound management. There's properties within an edge product that are unique to an edge product. Uh, for example, they use, uh, you know, wires, wireless cellular to, um, uh, to manage those devices in some cases. And so uh, there's some properties that they would like to add into that. And so that's a, a separate effort, and we've just identified that uh, as, as a potential up there. Um, and so the, the notion is that we develop actual specs for, for all of these, and again, using the, the validator, we should be able to test all of those. Um, and then, you know, looking ahead, um, you know, what does this mean? Well, this structure, this strategy actually maps in really nicely with, um, you know, look what we can do in the future. So, uh, obviously, um, there's opportunities to look at some open source DSIM applications. Uh, Redfish today already is supported by, uh, you know, applications like Docker and, and OpenStack and Kubernetes and so on. So, you know, there's, there's some of that compatibility already built into it. Um, but we actually have an opportunity to create our, our own set of open source uh, projects to, to deliver DSIM uh, type of, of functionality. Um, and then there's some emerging opportunities as well down the road. Uh, within the storage group, there's a, uh, they're working on an API to, to kind of interrogate a drive to understand the, the health and uh, properties around wear out. And so I can actually envision how that would map into, um, you know, the, the, the uh, properties that are managed by uh, uh, the storage devices. So that's just a little background on, on Redfish and the overall strategy for hardware management. Right. Um, so this is under development right now. It's it's on its very early stages. So we encourage people to get involved. Um, as of now, um, is Michael Thompson in the room? No, probably not. So it's right now. It's Michael Thompson and and, and me working working this one. Um, and Robert Bunger is also contributing. Hi, hi, Bob. Um, so this is how we envision um, what we will do for the rack and power redfish. We're, we're not reinventing a lot of the things here. There's, there's a DCIM profile already out there. We will probably adapt about 90% of what's there. And we have identified things that we need, we think needs to be in a rack and power profile. So um, the figure on the right, the OCP hardware management baseline profile, that's, that's a figure that I borrowed from what's in the OCP website. So we're envisioning that we would be participating on, on the figure on the left, which would be the chassis portion, power and thermal. Um, and then from that, we will develop an OCP rack and power profile and build up additional resources, additional um, elements that need to be in the, in the power profile. Um, we are also going to add power shelves, energy storage modules, um, PSU modules, because we think that there has to be some granularity in, in that one. Um, and then, of course, uh, we need some feedback from anyone who's done Redfish before. If Is this the most logical way to represent how, how this is going to be, to be managed? Okay, 
Um, again, I encourage people to get involved right now. Um, we need more feedback from, from the industry. Um, this is what we have done so far. Um, we have an initial list of the, of the elements and the initial list of the elements that we need to add. Um, based on what we have made, we've developed a mock-up and a schema. Those has, have gone through the validator already, so we're kind of like, okay, at least the baseline is fine. <laughs> so we just need to get the inputs from the other folks and be able to add those, uh, add those in. Um, now, I'm planning to set up um, by September 7th at least, get the final inputs from from the members of, of uh, this project, and then uh, be able to come up with a process of releasing this one, documentation and all that. I think there's a lot of documentation work that needs to be done here. Um, and then I'll also be scheduling monthly calls for people who want to get involved. As of now, we're coordinating via email, but I think we're at a point where, okay, we need to have um, semi-monthly calls for this. I guess um, that's it, and most of the stuff about voting or how do we determine um, approval for adding an element and all that, it will be done through the, the calls that I'll be setting up. All right, so if you want to get involved, just let me know and we'll get you in the mailing list. Quick question, when will the uh, initial Uh, actually, that's available right now. We've gone through the validation. We've okay. added the new elements there of, based on what we know. Um, now, if there are going to be additional elements during the course of the meeting, I think by October, we'll, we'll have another draft ready for it. So it's, it, it may be feasible at Amsterdam that we could actually um, have uh, power rectifiers that have been tested against that JSON input file, and, uh, and we could probably announce um, okay. those, those devices that are, that are already passing and supported. Yeah, let, let's work on that one, because uh, right now we don't have a volunteer for someone to, you know, test everything out. <laughs> we can provide the, the hardware now. Yep. You can so, right, yeah. right, okay. That's, I'll, I'll aim for that. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll preface it by saying that we already have the server uh, uh, baseline released. Out. Yep. We already have people testing. We already have passing results. Tomorrow morning at eight o'clock, I do a keynote at DMTF in Portland, and I'll announce that we have OCP products that are already conforming to the OCP profile. So I would. Those are for servers. I hope that you know by October that we can have a similar announcement. All right, thank you. So again, if this is a topic that interests you, right, if you can either get in touch with, uh, with me or Richard and we can, we can get you uh, involved in that as, as we go forward.